If you haven't played Monster Hunter World, you have been wasting your gaming life. Okay, maybe not, but Monster Hunter is super slept on in my opinion. And frankly, I haven't really heard that much about the Monster Hunter franchise. Looking into the Steam page, honestly, the game looked pretty damn amazing and it looked like the kind of thing that I was trying to get into. I wanted to experience this game without any biased opinions or any spoilers, so I just kind of bought it and hopped right in. And so begins our monster hunting adventure. I bought Monster Hunter World. Is that the claw? Damn, dude. This looks complicated. World of Monster Hunting. <laughs> it's a cat. I hope I can be a cat person. Yo, did you hear? We're almost there. You ready to grab this new world by the horns? The game starts off on a ship full of other hunters. Right away, this game looks pretty top-notch. The characters are a little campy, but fun. Oh, I just get a whole color wheel. Interesting. Dang, those are cool scars. What would a monster hunter look like? Let's go with this, but we're gonna change things. I'm blown away by the character customization options. Very in-depth and impressive. <laughs> that is so funny. Wait, I can... Oh, I can reposition them? That's so gross. Eyelash length? Dude, the character customization's insane. I can change each eye individually? Excellent! <laughs> Why are they so scantily clad? Can I get more clothes? One clay. A kitty! No one told me there was cats in this game, bruh. They're called palicos? Ooh, he look meh. Hmm. These are so cute. I'm so hyped, dude. I can't wait to see what my palico can do for me. His name is gonna be Bunk. Bunk. That seems pretty close. Oh, dear God. Uh, oh, what the hell is that? We just hit a giant rock? Or giant rock hit us? The story starts off with our crew sailing to the new world, and we get interrupted by a very rude volcano turtle named Zora Magdaros. My lord, a snapping turtle. Wow. We end up somewhere in a forest which serves as a place to teach us the gameplay basics. Hey, hey, is something here? It's a monster. Get the gun. Oh man, there's like two of them, and they look hungry. Is that a track? And we get another sneak peek at a few of oh. our epic enemies that we will be facing. It looks big! Are you kidding? <laughs> that is not good. Dude! Bruh! <laughs> Alright, that's a pretty good little intro into the world. Show us the T-Rex. Not that that hasn't been done like a million times. <laughs> Once we're reintroduced to our ravishing little base, it's time to test out some of the weapons and choose my new personality for the next several months. What the hell? Oh, where the food is? Typical. He's not working, is he? Hey, oh. He's just wandering. Hey, hey fam. <laughs> Why is he happy to see her? You don't even know her yet, dude. So we got Hunter's Knife. Are these are my weapons? Gun Lance? Metal bagpipe? What the hell is that? In Monster Hunter World, the weapons make all the difference. There are no classes, so everything is based on the weapon you pick. So, let's just see how much combat changes when I change it out for a different uh, weapon. This is good because there's no permanent commitment, although you do spend a lot of time and resources making weapons, so you do want to stick with one thing, and there is a pretty what, brutal what, learning what? curve on them. Uh. 
but you aren't completely locked in. If you buy Monster Hunter World on Steam, there's a packaged option that also includes the Forbidden Armor. Defender's Armor is intended as catch-up gear that is very good to help you get along to Iceborne content. Many people claim it ruins the experience because it makes the game too easy. There's a lot of truth to this. Pathetically, even with the armor, I still struggled at some points. I eventually started to realize how spoiled I was by it once I beat the main game, and had a brutal learning curve in Iceborne. I never really thought about it, I just kind of equipped the stuff that I had. The first mission awaits! All of the beginning quests really aim to teach you how to play, of course, and there's a lot to learn. Crafting, the complicated combat, and various other mechanics you can use to interact with the environment and monsters, there is really a lot to learn. Right away, I understood this game was going to be tough. I even had a rough time on the little critters. God, why is that so hard? Oof, combat's rough. Oh, poor Clayton. Ew! It's funny to look back to think that killing a monster in five minutes with Defender's Armor was tough for me. I really had no idea what I was in for. The game was really attractive in a lot of ways, but starting off was a bit intimidating. There is a lot to this game and a lot to learn. The level of complexity really adds to the long-term enjoyment of a game sometimes. Bonk! <laughs> He's on a little flotation device, paddling with his shovel. That's hilarious. The menus and the writing aren't always super intuitive either, so there are a few things that escape me for a long time. Vital information only. My name, my playtime, hours, how much money I have, and my gender. The next thing to do was learn about expeditions and go out and explore the world a little bit. Even after several hours of playtime, we're still cracking the surface of the basics. What am I doing? Oh Christ. Oh, for the love of God. I expected the game to be a bit more open world style and to be a bit more seamless going into the open world. The game is pretty unique in the way that it sets everything up, and I don't mind at all. Poogie! <laughs> He's got a little sweater on. What? We love Poogie. Pick up. Oh, Boogie. <laughs> I'm just carrying it around. How do I set it down? Find something Boogie. Can I change the clothing on him already? No. Yeah, let's make him look like... What's his name from Monsters, Inc.? <laughs> That's so cute. Change your Poogie's name. We'll just call him Bilbo. Okay, Bilbo. Bilbo and Bunk. Eventually, I settled on a weapon that I would be using for most of the game. Great Sword Supremacy, baby! Each weapon is complex and takes some learning, and I will go back and explore some interesting weapons in the future. A staple for the first section of the game is defeating Zora Magdaros. What is this? Get to your posts now! Oh, a snapping turlock. Oh, a giant elder dragon the size of a small volcano with the attitude of one as well. The quests dealing with Zora Magdaros are kind of a welcomed break from the same Monster Hunter format. Whoa. Oh, right in his open mouth. That was nice. Oh, here's a hitching post. Okay. Run its back, I'm on its back! Find the magma oh, cores. Dude, this is literally cores. exactly like Deathwing. That's one of those cores. Attack it. Where? Ah. This one? Oh! Nice! Okay, so maybe there's... Uh-oh. Jeez! Well, there's his head. This is scary. I don't like that these animations might throw me off the edge. Ow! 
This cannot be. What's that? Are you okay? <laughs> it just reset me. What is this? <laughs> oh no, is that it? What happens now? In this, you know, in this game, I never thought I would fight a dragon on the back of another dragon. I'll say that much. Yeah, of course he's fine. Have you seen how... The more I played this game, the more enjoyable it became. The first 10 or so hours are essentially an introduction into the game, despite fighting a literal mountain. After the altercation with Magdaros, we discovered another very unique and creative area in Monster Hunter. So we didn't get him. That was a really cool mission. So that was very different than everything we've done. It's been pretty pre uh, repetitive so far. And I have to say, like, those cutscenes and all that action, like, it's fun. It's fun to watch. Whoa! It's like underwater, dude. This is so cool. Okay, so now we're on an actual expedition. There's jellyfish! And there's like lightning going on over there. I have a really bad feeling about this place. What the fuck is that? That's the monster we ran into earlier. Big boss around these parts. Yo. Oh. Dude, am I actually just trash at this game? Fuck, did I just aggro the other one? God damn it. This is really not good. Oh, Christ. Alright, well, Jesus Christ. I finally found it. It had nothing to do with anything I was doing. I'm scared. I don't like that. I don't like that. I am gonna go back. Fuck this whole place. Okay, well Coral Highlands has been absolutely insane. I spent some time fighting various monsters in the beginning areas of the game, and playing catch up, and doing some optional quests. Anjanoth and the Rathians were starting to give me a taste of how challenging this game could really be, despite having absolutely broken equipment. The final bout with Zora Magdaros was challenging. I had to farm some fire resistance, and at the time, I didn't even realize I needed to roll to put out the fires on myself, which is embarrassing and of course made the entire fight, uh, very challenging. You can roll three times to put out the fire. Remember stop, drop, and roll? This was a decently challenging quest, despite it not being a full-blown monster fight. Alright, I get flown over. Ah, uh, yes. There's a core now. Now I just do as much damage as possible. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? What the fuck is that? I don't remember any critters last time. Alright. Hold nothing back. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Ooh, no, I'm gonna die. Bro, that was so much. What am I supposed to do about that? Alright, this time let's not oh, fucking no. lose like idiots. Yeah, yeah. Use whatever you can. He's a silly billy, alright. Oh, 
big boy core first. That's it, I'm getting oh. out of here. That's it? I just had to confront him. Very nice. Part. All right, we're gonna do this, baby. Let's go. The switch is on the bow of the ship. I think I jump off right here. Dragon air switches at the end of the ship. Is that it? Oh! Now that's a lot of damage. Grab a transport and I'll take you back up to the top of the. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nowhere near weak enough. The chance we've been waiting for. This is it. This is the last phase. Uh, Where's my Dragonator? Ready when you are. Good. Fire! Ooh. I didn't seem to pierce him. Scared. Whoa. We did it. Yes. What did we? Oh, look, dude, look at my skin. That looks sick. I'm scared. This is gonna be like one of those tricks. It's gonna be like, oh yeah, we did it. What? It's over. I just like finished the tutorial basically, I think. Not even close to the tutorial, really. Sora Magdaros. Oh man, all kinds of big shit. It took me many attempts to actually get it done, but we finally killed our first Elder Dragon. I believe this is a milestone graduating us from low rank to high rank hunts. Now, the fun begins. The beginning stages of any video game always feel pretty magical. We get introduced into an exciting fantasy world, learn a plethora of new things, and get excited about the adventures to come. Choosing a weapon is a bit of a commitment, and I think I found one that I wanted to practice with for the rest of the game. Interacting with the environment, swinging and climbing, gathering, the slinger and clutch claw, weapon sharpening and the mechanics of your weapon are all things that make this game pretty vast and interesting, but it can be a lot to learn at first. I personally found the game and its interface a little clunky, and I had a rough learning curve with the controls and combos. It can be frustrating in that aspect. It's worth noting, I am on mouse and keyboard, and I think this game is more intuitive on controller. The gameplay of this game is really fun. Every fight is just a big boss fight in an epic hunt. The monsters are all very cool and unique and challenge you in various ways. The cutscenes are so cool. It makes you feel so epic to watch a cutscene of a crazy monster do some wild shit and then zoom out to show your character now facing off with that monster. Disabling various parts of the monster, grappling onto it, mounting it, using traps in the environment to help you makes this game all the more epic. The art style, the armor, and the weapons are all well designed too. There's a lot of progression to get done, and the game just feels more challenging, which makes it more intriguing, although frustrating. But the fact that it's challenging makes defeating a particularly tough monster feel very, very good. Stay tuned. In the next video, we will be exiting high rank and beating the main game and seeing what exciting things this game has in store for us. Thank you so much for watching. This has been my first Monster Hunter video. I'm very excited to start making videos about this game. I do love it. I have spent 
several hundred hours in this game now. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you have questions or comments, leave a comment. And if you want to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you later, gamers. Stay gaming.